There is a lot more coming out of Orlando that we'll get into and a tragic story from overnight uh, that we'll give you details on. They're looking at the wife now. She's saying that she knew he was capable of this stuff, that um, she did not, while well, she didn't know the exact uh, attack, she did know that he was talking about doing such a thing, and she was with him when he was scoping it out, and he was scoping out Disney as well, Disney Springs, which, um, Andrew, that's the old uh, downtown uh, downtown Disney. Yeah, and there's always a lot of people there. Oh, that's an awesome place to go to as well. It's night, a lot of nightlife well, and they've shopping. Got, and they've and, even got uh, a Cirque du Soleil there. Yeah. They've got arcades, restaurants. Right, there, there's another story we'll get to coming up that involves, uh, it is just tragic, and... It hits home for me because I've been to this place. Uh, we'll talk about it coming up. It involves another tragic story, a third tragic story out of Orlando. Before we get to that, we have our own bizarre tragic story. And that one uh, comes out of Whitesboro, where a uh, physical therapist, a chiropractor, uh, who died last year, there's now been charges in her death. And it's bizarre. So Jim Rondinelli covered this press conference yesterday, and when he came back, he said this is right out of CSI. He said this is like a made-for-TV movie. A Sequoit woman by the name of, I just lost her name, Caitlin Conley. She's 23 years old. She is was an employee at the chiropractic firm of Mary Louise Yoder, and it was a firm that was located in Whitesboro on Oriskany Street. Caitlin Conley now charged with murder following a seven-month-long investigation after a family member said Mary Louise Yoder's death should be looked into because the family member thought that the death was suspicious. Yeah. Previously, they thought there was nothing suspicious about it, that perhaps she died of natural causes. The family member asked them to look into it. The Onondaga County Medical Examiner's Office found colchicine toxicity, colchicine in her system. And it, and it was a pure form of that, uh, of that chemical, um, which was according to police, ordered online. It's more of a scientific uh, version of that as opposed to something that you'd get in a pill form right? And, or uh, in, a, in a, a medicine form. I, I don't know what you would use it for, but this was something that would be used in science, not in medicine. Okay, and, and I don't see, I'm not familiar with this. What is it? Don't, don't look uh, at me. It's I a toxic know. poison. Yeah. Okay. It's whatever it is, they're saying that's what killed this woman. So, and Andrew and I were talking about it last night. It's interesting because the the woman in her obituary, I guess Caitlin Conley was listed as kind of like a daughter. Close. Very her. close. Yeah. So, you know, of course, these are all allegations. She is arrested on suspicion. She's charged with murder. We this don't has know been going sure. on for quite some Seven time. Months. And they really knew a lot around uh, the December area. Mm -hmm. Um, where it seems that that's when they really kind of began their questioning of this uh, this Connolly, and it's just again another bizarre story straight out of CSI. Just when you say, "Wow, these crazy stories happen elsewhere," we're looking at one here right now. And again, we don't know a lot, and and they're being very very careful right now about talking of motive. What would the motive be? And we were talking about this yesterday when this for story first broke. Think about in your own life, in your own person, to, I mean, we've all been in situations where you might be angry, where you might even hate, where you might really despise someone. But think about actually taking that step. Um, and the thoughts might even cross your mind, but actually taking that step, we all have that little fine line, most of us anyway, that I guess. That stops us. That stops you from, well, that's, you know, uh, I shouldn't think like that. That's even thinking crazy. about it, right. right. It's like even crazy to think about that. Mm -hmm. But to actually go forward to, if police are correct in this, to order it online, I mean, you're leaving a trail anyway. Not that I, we should be looking at it that way. But uh, to order it online, to research, and to actually then take the next step to use it. On a human being, someone that you know, and whether you despise or not, but uh, that's a big step for somebody who's human, and it 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 probably makes you you question someone's um, someone's sanity mm -hmm. if they're able to do such a thing. And if in fact it was ordered online, of course that speaks to the premeditated nature of yeah, because you order it and you have time to think about it and. Uh, research. Here's the uh, here's the story from out of town. Of course, uh, we're learning a lot about this uh, Orlando nightclub shooting. There's an interesting uh, editorial in today's Observer Dispatch, and I think it's well written. And it talks about this is not about 
Uh, this attack is not about a religion. It's not about someone who is Muslim. It's about someone who is is clearly mentally ill, and we're learning a lot about that. And they went through the number of uh, mass shootings that have happened in this country, and, and some of them recently, uh, just like uh, Newtown, Connecticut, that were not related to. We didn't walk away saying that it was uh, it was based on Christian uh, Christianity or whatever somebody's religion was. Um, and they're saying we have to be very careful about doing the same thing now. Unfortunately, we have a presidential candidate out there that's really opening up that door for rhetoric, even making his own uh, his, the people who have endorsed him at this point uh, very uncomfortable. Uh, but that is what it is. Uh, this has nothing to do with any of that, but it's a third strike on Orlando. And this happening at Disney last night, about 9 o'clock last night at the Grand Floridian, which is a, a resort that I've stayed at. It's their nicest resort. Right on Disney. the Magic Kingdom uh, campus right, there. Right off the Magic Kingdom. It's right on the water. A lot of weddings are done there. My wife and I, on our, our honeymoon 17 years ago, stayed there. It's a beautiful, beautiful hotel. And there's water, and the child was standing next to the water. And now these are all man-made waters uh, there in, 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 at the Disney complex. And an alligator came out and grabbed the child and dragged the child into the water. The father went in after, and the child is still missing. Really an unbelievable story. Mm -hmm. At a place where, you know, everything is meant to be somewhat scary at times and made to be uh, uh, like you're swimming in the ocean, but you're really not because it's man-made. And you get to see all of these different things. They might be behind a glass wall of some sort. Or it might be uh, 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 sea life that is that is not going to uh, that you can't be injured by, or the stingrays have their their stinger taken out. All of that stuff, all of those precautions are taken to be able to allow you to experience wildlife and uh, and 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 do to do it safely. And here, out of nowhere, in Florida, where alligators, are I mean, everywhere. Christine, they're everywhere, right? They crawl yeah. into everything. I mean, people have them in their pools, so it's probably not, uh, it's probably not something that's, that's unlikely to happen, but this is just a terrible story. It, it really is. I mean, I, I've spoken about how, you know, when I was younger, certainly there was not as much development as there is now back in the 1800s. They had, you know, swampland everywhere, and we had, in school, alligator evasion training. Whether or not it would have actually worked, I don't know, but you were taught to be aware of alligators, and I think so many times people go down to Florida and think, you know, I did it myself. I went on a Disney cruise. We went to the Bahamas. Yeah. You know, I'm swimming in the ocean, the ocean, which is not a Magic Kingdom property. Sure. As and, beautiful as it is, you just don't know what... Uh, and I'm thinking, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I kept going farther and farther out. Nothing's going to happen. It's Disney water. Right, right. And there's a barracuda staring me in the face yeah. you know animals wild animals are there's nothing to be joked out about them they're well know, and, and, this, and this poor and this, little child this uh this is a case where the the family had no uh who would have thought who would have thought in a man-made lake at, and a man-made lake at disney of all places right. uh, evan brown on the line right now from fox news uh of course it's been a tragic on uh, three terrible stories out of uh, out of orlando this week yeah, good morning. It, it's um, it, it's not been a good week here. Uh, that's the understatement of the year, I guess. Well, let's focus on uh, on what we know about the survivors from the nightclub attack. As uh, we heard yesterday, uh, that, uh, many uh, there's a, a pretty strong number, a pretty large number of uh, of survivors that are in critical condition still. Uh, yeah, there, there are about uh, I think six that are still in critical condition, or at least uh, that was the number we were given yesterday. Um, and some of them, we're told, are, are in pretty sad shape. Uh, and uh, we were we were also told by one of the doctors at Orlando Regional Medical Center that uh, we should not be surprised if, if a couple of them really don't make pass it. away. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's that uh, they're in they're in that bad of shape, and, and uh, you know that that would obviously add to the number of fatalities uh, associated with this. Um, but, uh, you know, what is remarkable is how many lives they did save. Uh, one of the, probably the helpful, most helpful thing that, that, that led to that, I believe, would have been the fact that this level one trauma center was just mere blocks from the club. Um, and, uh, it was just that easy to get people to the hospital, uh, and the hospital was able to ramp up its operations very quickly. Uh, they, um, 
you know, they train for these kinds of things. They yeah. hold drills regularly and whatnot because they are, again, the, the area's level one trauma center. Sure. Um, but, you know, when it when it's time to really do this, yeah, you know, when yeah. it's a real-world application, I mean, you know, it, it's, it can be frightening. Even, right. even yeah. for these, these trained and stoic doctors and nurses, it can still be frightening. Um, but they were able to really pull it off, and they saved a lot of lives. We, uh, we were discussing on Monday uh, after this whole thing when we were just learning about everything, uh, how... The, the, that scene of the uh, of the, the it didn't look like they were EMT. It looked like they were police officers uh, carrying a a person uh, that was clearly bleeding and had been shot and loading them into a pickup truck because there were so many injured and so many that they were trying to transport. They did not have enough ambulances. Well, it, you know, getting the ambulances it, it would have been too time consuming. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, again, the the hospital. It, a half a mile, I think, really. Right. The and so there were people who just had, you know, the ability who were nearby with, with pickup trucks or other vehicles that were able to take these people to the hospital. Just, uh, and that was really the smartest move they could have made. Yeah. Uh, if they waited for ambulances, you don't know they might not uh, have survived. How, right. uh, how worse it could have been. Yeah. Um, even if you were just waiting for an ambulance to, to drop off and come back, you know, it just it just didn't make sense from yeah. a timeline condition to do that. Andrew. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've had the, the chance to talk to any of the doctors or surgeons there, but I saw on uh, one other news outlet there was an interview with some of those trauma surgeons from the night of and and what terrible terribly hard decisions that that had to have been made Uh, i remember one of the surgeons saying we had to look at each patient and say okay is this person going to survive and we got to make that tough choice well yeah you know we we were all at a a big press conference at the at the hospital yesterday and i mean when i talk about big i mean it was just this this room, which was a pretty large room, was was just packed, and people, myself included, were sort of jammed up against the rear wall. Uh, there have been so many uh, journalist teams that have come from around the world to really cover this. So it, it uh, I don't I don't think I've seen anything this widely uh, you know attended, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the the, uh, the doctors were were telling us about this, where you know they basically had to look at every every patient that they have or had that night and say, you know, okay, this one isn't going to make it anyway. We're not going to occupy an, an OR with him because he's really on his way out. He's going to be yeah, gone in a wow. couple minutes. Yeah, those you know, are or, terrible or decisions. Or we have to say they have other people and they say, all right, this one's just that much worse than the other one, so this guy gets to go to the OR first. Wow. You know, it, it, it's a very cold type of decision-making, but it's actually the most effective thing you can do. All right. Well, listen, uh, this has just been a, a terrible week. Uh, Evan Brown, we appreciate your time, and uh, and thanks for your coverage down there. You got it. All right. Uh, Evan Brown from Fox News, and uh, it's uh, you, you have to make that decision. That's a toughie. That's a tough decision to have to make, and, oh, by the way, to have to live with for the rest of your life, knowing that you had to make that decision. Uh, hold on tight. We'll take a break. Uh, our free money question of the day today is not worth one, two, or $300 from the Hobiko Law Firm. Uh, well, it is kind of, it's worth $300. It's a $300 question of the day. And I'm going to try to do one every hour this morning because I'd like to give away a $300 um, prize here this morning. Let's see if we can do it. Hold tight. We're coming back at WIBX.